All righty then. I said to God, what can I do for Mother's Day? I had great plans. I said, okay, let me help. Let me see a picture of a divorced mother. Let me see a picture of a single mother. Let me see a picture of a married mother. Let me see. And I tried to say, God, okay, let me, let me see that we're going to minister to them for Mother's Day. And then the Lord changed our message. <laughs> and this is Mother's Day's gift, right? We're talking about idolatry, but it's a Mother's Day gift this morning for you. And you are going to recognize only afterwards, I believe, that you receive the gift today. But then for every mother, it counts that their children and their husband and all of them will be saved and free. I know that too. So, yeah, happy Mother's Day. And so this is about relationship idolatry, talking about idolatry. And maybe you have knowledge of idolatry. Maybe you sit here and you say, yeah, but I heard this before. I know about idolatry. But this is an, a different revelation that I believe God will give to you this morning. Because you need to understand completely what this is and how it messes up your life. And if you are sitting in here and you are unhappy and struggling with anger and all sorts of hurt and torment, you are in the right place. Because this is the thing that's causing this in your life. And you've got to recognize that, that I want to let go. I believe that nothing can go away if you don't hate it. You know, if you want to get a person to really stop smoking, they've got to hate that cigarette first. They've got to hate the smell, they've got to hate everything about it, and then they can divorce it. But people like something, they hold on to that thing. And so you've got to hate your anger, you've got to hate the thing, the torment, the depression that you go through all the time, and it's like a circle going around and around, it's okay, and then it goes and you fall back into this state. And I believe that God has given me revelation to help you this morning to get rid of this because of your focus, right? So, so I get people that are hurt all the time and it's, you know, I used to tell them and I used to tell myself, look, yeah, if Jesus was not thrown out by people, you know, if he had to, to look at the disciples in the garden and he would never go to the cross because he would would be thrown off by their choice. Look, they're sleeping while I'm dying on the cross, so I don't know if I must go to the cross because they can't even stay awake. Those, those are my words. Those are familiar words for me. I always tell people that. Don't look at your marriage partner. Look at, you know, God and put your eyes on Him and lay down for Him. Do all that you do for Him. And this is, you know, good advice. But, you know, I believe that you need something else. You need to see something else because there's something else bothering. Because I don't get the people to actually just make a mind switch and stop looking at this person. I, I, I have a hard time to get people to take their eyes off their marriage partner. Yeah. And, they, and they keep on looking at what they're doing. And we went through the rejection uh, things. We said, okay, well, you have a stronghold of rejection. So you are set up to see everything that this person is doing that, that, that confirms that they don't love me, right? I'm not important to them. And we went through that, and that is definitely one of the things that also torment people. But today we're talking about idolatry. And this is a different kind of idolatry that you think about. You think about an uh, idol. You think about uh, as something that people idolize. It's not the same. This is relationship idol idolatry. I'm putting a person in the wrong place. So they get hurt, they are being tormented, they can't get set free, and then, you know, we are stuck. So um, I tell them, what did Jesus do? Um, Jesus suffered rejection, betrayal, hurt, physical harm, people killed him, right? And these are the things that happened to Jesus, and yet he stayed on his mission, he stayed in joy, he stayed in peace, and uh, we have to be like Jesus, and we can be like Jesus if we just know what to do. We need a key. This is a key today for somebody. I believe that if a person doesn't want to, like I said, doesn't want to let go of these things, it's going to be not for you this message, because some people want to control other people. They want to hurt other people, and then they like the effect of what they have on people. They, they, they do something out of spite and they and they want to hurt people because they hurt inside 
hurt person will hurt other people. And you've got to know that. If you are still hurt, you're going to probably hurt somebody else. Because what are you happy about? Look at me, you know. Come down to my level of pain. Let me see, right? And so they bring people down all the time. They can't handle it if people are joyful. Because they are unhappy. So idolatry, making something else or someone else your God. Making somebody else your God. Um, so we have to really hate this thing and it's the suffering we want to get rid of. It's not going to be a very long message today because I want to spend time in prayer as well and help you guys to repent. Oh, did I come to church to repent? Yes, you came to church to repent today. Because the idolatry causes uh, God's jealousy, causes God's you know, uh, wrath against what you are busy with. And then this thing that you are looking for cannot come until you put it in the right place. See? So this is in the way of your blessing. You've got to see that. It's costing you a lot to do this thing. To put this person in that place. To put this business in the place. Whatever. And so it happens all over the place. I will explain. So, um, yeah. So do you get angry and feel that the person made you ba bad, but made a bad choice, and therefore they are the reason why I am angry. That's how it goes. That your bad choice, look at what you made me do. Right? We have a song like that. Right? It's a pop song. It's not a gospel song. Look at what you made me do. Look at what you made me do. I'm like, you on repeat, girl. <laughs> it's like blame shifting, and it's, that's in the world now at the moment. All racism, everything, it's your fault, it's your color, it's your whatever that I'm here. And people are shifting all the blame on other people and it's easy to do that because then, you know, I'm free of any responsibility. So you get angry for people's bad choices. Mothers, you're getting a gift today, don't worry. You're getting a gift today. And you're feeling the torment in the relationships because this is really what's happening. A deep rejection, pain and anger and deep unhappiness in a relationship. Because this person, you know, makes me so unhappy. And their choice, right? And the anger, depression, hurt itself is the torment. You've got to catch this. Your anger inside of you is the torment. You, the, 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 the anger that people get around you is only that's boiling out of you. But you are the hub of the anger. And so this is coming out of your heart now. So your whole heart is angry. That's why your mouth is running like that. And so you've got to see that this anger inside of your, your heart is your enemy. This is destroying you. And that's you have to get out. And, and today you're going to get it out. So some will not let this go. I said that. Because they like it. But you've got to like let down, lay down these weapons and give it back to God and say, God, I trust you with this person. I'm not going to interfere anymore. I don't want to change them. I don't want to do anything. And I believe, God, that you will be whole today in a sense that you don't need another half. You see this other half. And even the part that we say that my heart belongs to you, watch out. Watch out. Because there's a holy of holies inside of every person that only God must be in. And we allow a person in that holies of holies, then we get hurt. Yeah. Right? I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to drop some of the things. I don't want to um, go ahead of myself. But, but it's, it's when you give a person, right? If you give a person um, the... Yeah, you are... Let me wait. It doesn't want to come out now. Don't push it. Right? <laughs> See, don't kick doors open. I said to God, help me. Right, I want to really land this message for you today. Um, so you can be a person that struggles to forgive. You have to forgive all the time. All the time you hurt and all the time you have to forgive. And it feels like hell. It feels like you're living in a hell. And because you're tormented all the time by what's happening with you. And so the will of God for you is to forgive. Look, God says if you do not, do not forgive, I will not forgive. It's how it works. It's how God's system works. Some people will say it's unfair. Don't, let God uh, decide. Let God judge. Let God vindicate you. Let God, let God decide. 
And I always say to people, so, you know, you're standing alone before God, she's standing alone before God. Get the picture. Don't look at her. Take the beam out of your own eye. I know all these things. I, I know how God wants us to be. But yet I also struggle <clears throat> to actually let this go and let this happen. Because the person that you are married to and the person that's closest to you or the thing that's closest to you have a big effect on you if you don't know what to do, how to handle this. You see, if I'm going to look at my company and decide that my, you know, let my, let my company decide how much I'm blessed. If I'm going to draw information from what I see happening in the outside, yeah, and I'm going to base that and say that's how blessed I am, then my, I've let this company into my secret place. And God is the one supposed to say whether I'm blessed or not. And that's what I'm supposed to trust in, His word and what He says, not what I see. That's obvious, but you see there's a minor little switch we have to make here today. So, <clears throat> so we have to, you know, put all that in God's hand. But, and you are, you, are, uh, you are seeing a repeat of the same pattern of hurt and pain all the time. You're in the right place this morning. And you forgive people all the time for what they do and for not loving you. Right? Yes. This is hurtful. You know, if you get more revelation about how love works, it becomes worse. You know that love sacrifices. Jesus didn't, nobody, nobody, they even left him alone. They could, could have walked out the garden. They slept, so he could have slipped out. But then he chose to die. And he was sweating, the sweat became like blood. But he said, no, let me do this, because I love them. Right? And now if you go in a, in a relationship, you'll see that this person can choose whether they love you or not. And it's very hurtful. I don't want to mess the women up this morning because I said to God, you know, let me say something to the husbands. He says no, but then the, the wives are going to be angry at the husbands the whole day. So, <laughs> see, you don't do that. See, you don't do that. <laughs> and you must know today this message is for you, for every single person here, for you alone. Take it for yourself. Because this torment is inside of the people. And so, you know, be careful that you, that you point fingers this morning again. And say, yeah, look at what you made me do, right? So, um, so you're forgiving all the time. Around the same mountain. Cannot trust the Lord. Uh, can you trust the Lord today to take this pain away? Can you trust the Lord to take this pain away? I hate this pain and hate this torment. Right? How can you have, how can you allow, that's what we're asking. You know, I get all sorts. I get people here telling me, this mother-in-law is driving me crazy. And I'm like, okay, but you see her size, she's very small. How can that small old woman drive you nuts? How does she get the power to do that? Why do you give her the power to, I don't know, pastor, but she's driving me nuts. And I'm like, yes, and we need answers, eh? Because this is really happening to her. She, you know, she's going to drive me nuts. And I'm like, you know what? We need help here. And so Exodus 20, I just want to give you the scriptures here because this is what we base the message on. Exodus 20, verse 3. You shall not have other gods beside me, before or beside me. You shall not make yourself any graven image to worship it, and uh, any likeness of any that is in the heavens above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them and serve them. Just remember these words, serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. And that jealous God there is not like your ugly, fearful husband, controlling and and being horrible because but if you talk about men being jealous then they will be jealous of other men right if women are jealous they will be jealous of other women because he crop on my sloy okay and I blame careers door it's a problem was it really good so this rant can you cry right and so anyway so you know I'm a jealous God but I'm looking for divine Affection. I'm looking for divine relationship. Uh, that's not the word I was looking for. Divine 
uh, affection. Let me leave it there. That's what the jealous God means. Divine attention, sorry. Yes. It's divine attention. That's what it stands for. I'm looking for you to be, let, let me be your center. Let me be your everything. I want divine attention. I must be first in your life. Mm. Right. Visit, uh, he says he's visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generation for those who hate me. <clears throat> but do not bow yourself. You shall not bow down yourself to them or serve them. You see, when you have an idol, when a, you have a person that's an idol, this person, you will become their slave. And you will serve them. Because you're looking for something from the idol. Right? And you are defining your, you know, uh, your worth, getting your worth in what the person does. So let me explain. First Corinthians 10, 14. Therefore, my dearly beloved, shun, run. No, run, florist, forest, run. <laughs> the florist and the forest must run. He says, run away, flee, right? Flee away from idolatry. Do not have any part in that. Keep clear away, avoid by flight if need be. Right? Any sort of idolatry of loving and venerating, that's revering, anything more than God. Don't let anything take the place of God in your heart. Do not let anything else come into the secret place where only God is allowed to come. Do not let anything else determine how much you are loved. This is, thank you God, came out now. Do not let this person determine the overall picture of how much you are accepted, loved or valued. This is what we mistake. We let this person, because they're making bad choices, they don't choose to love you, they don't choose to do this, that, that, take the trash out. Now, I know that I'm not loved. But my eyes are on the person, not on God. And God said to me, get me in the, in the holies of holies. Plus, now you have this other problem with idolatry, and that God is a jealous God. He will not allow that idol to be what you think it might be. So maybe your business is your idol, that thing can never become because your value and how much you think you are blessed comes from what you see in your bank account, your business, and God is not uh, going to allow that to be successful because your eyes are on the value system that you established. Yeah. Because you see, this, this is the problem, I hope you find this now, is that, that, that I put my eyes on a person and I allow this person. So if you repent today, you're going to repent of forgive me God that I place my eyes on a person and let that person determine how much I'm loved. Because I took my eyes off of you, I took it on and put it on you. Already we had testimony already of this working already because it's a, it's a switch that you have to make. You have to repent also because that sin is hanging until it's under the blood, right? Until the blood washes the way, then the blessing can come now. You see, because you're focusing on this person and, and um, I pray that God will set us free today. So therefore, dearly beloved, shun, keep clear, away from, avoid flight if need be, any sort of idolatry or loving and revering anything more than God. That's the sin. Right? He's, he's supposed to be in the holy of holies of your heart. You see, this will, this will also help you with the wholeness story. That if you marry a person, you've got to find this person whole. That, they are, that God is the center of their life. And then if God is the center of their life, you don't have to perform anything that can make them feel loved or not loved. You see, if, if people put their eyes on a person, then that person will fall in their eyes. Because God will not allow that person to stand. Because it's not God. And so, if you put your eyes on the pastor, you say, look... Now I'm very hurt or whatever. You don't have, you, you said this, you offended me, whatever. People put their trust in this person and then they allow this person to determine how much they are loved and cared for. And that's the problem. So get that right first before you get married so that this person cannot hurt you. See, I'm looking at Jesus. I'm looking at, because that's who we are following, right? What would Jesus do? 
Jesus was not thrown out by the choices of people. And how did he do that? God was in a secret place. These people cannot get in. They don't have access. Because I get only taught by God my value, not by people. I'm not thrown out by church attendance. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing because it's not, it doesn't give me the, the message, the, this result. So you counsel someone. Then they go and uh, fall back in the world. You pray for healing for somebody. They don't get healed. Now you look at this now and your performance or what you see here, uh, you allow that to determine whether you are called, whether the word of God is now true or not. And you must get rid of that mindset. It's not about, the, you see, so the ministry can be in the wrong place. If the ministry is in the wrong place, then <clears throat> I will get my value from that. I will, I will try and find out whether I'm really called, whether I'm really in the right direction. And then you get upset, you get depressed, you get you know, thrown out by this because it's so big, right? Becomes a very, very bad thing. Romans 6, 16, do not, there's a lot of do nots your mothers, sorry. Do you not know? Sorry, it's different. Do you not know? Something you didn't know, mothers. Do you not know that if you continually surrender yourself to anyone to do his will, you are the slaves of him who you obey. Whether it be sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. Right doing and right standing with God. See? Worship is to obey. So that's where the idol worship now comes in. Because you're obeying. But what are you obeying? You are obeying the anger, spirit of anger. Right? Depression. These things, you are bowing before them. And you are doing what they say you must do. Get him, get him, get him, get him back, you know. Revenge, come, let's sort him out. Because he doesn't love you, right? But now he doesn't tell you the torment that you're going through while you are doing this. But you are now obeying another spirit now, not the Holy Spirit. You can't be selfless now. You don't have, uh, you don't have superpower. You lost your, your power from God to be able to stand. Self-control, right? Because you moved away and you're serving and you're being obedient to something. You're surrendering yourself to these things that wants you to be horrible, that wants you to be upset and steal your life. See the picture. So it's a whole system that the devil actually also uses to, to destroy your life. Because you're just unhappy now. Just unhappy. Because you notice that you're not you know, very valuable you notice that they don't have time for you and, you know, if I phone you, you're always busy. You know, women will say, but you always answer the phone when you work phone, but never. When I phone, I never get you. You're never there for me. You're always late. Nothing works in the house. So focus on the person. You are focusing on this person and you are losing your joy because of this. Genesis 22, 5, Abraham said to the young men, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy, Isaac, will go over there and worship and come back again, prophesying, we're going to come back. I don't know what God is going to do, but God will supply all my needs. I'm going to worship this boy. And he didn't like play. He really, you know, the angel said twice, Abraham, Abraham, because when Abraham went, he like was going to go for it. And I see the picture. I say, Abraham, no, he doesn't hear you. He's already gone right Abraham what all right so he decided to offer up Isaac no problem I'll offer this up and 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 many of you had the test this morning a faith test but actually a weather test and God said to me I said I, I rebuke the clouds I rebuke all those things in the morning I said get away in Jesus name I don't allow the devil to use the clouds and the weather and all this to bring interfere right like I always do and God said to me no the clouds are there for a reason it's part of my sifting. It's part of how I see. Sorry. But, yeah. Sorry, hey. No. Stay here. I'm going to worship. What, what does the worship mean? I'm going to offer up myself. So obedience is worship. So you obey, obey these things. 
then you are worshipping. So there's also a gauge to see whether you are now in idolatry. So you will find this upset now, and you will find it's getting, um, it's boiling, right? It's coming up. <laughs> and then you know there's a problem. A person is on the, on the altar. It's the wrong place. This person is in the holies of holies now. Get them out quickly and repent. Repenting now will bring the deliverance, bring the healing, and you will be set free. Right? Is anyone getting this message this morning? You understand what I'm trying to tell you guys? Romans 6. What is that? Yes, finish. We want to go home. Yes, no. Romans 6, 18. And having been set free from sin, you have become the servants of righteousness. So I've served God. I don't serve the devil or sin. I don't serve anyone else. And so what's going to happen now, if you start doing this right, this person is going to change, the blessing is going to come, the business is going to start to be blessed because the business is not your source or your, your source of, um, of value. You don't get how much I'm worth by your performance or how the business performs. Now the business is in the right place. God is not a jealous God anymore because that God has been taken care of. Remember, the blood of Jesus will wash this away instantly. You must just recognize what the problem is so that you can get set free. So, you've been set free from sin. You have become the servants of righteousness. Right? Verse 22. But now since you have been set free from sin and have become the slaves of God. See? Because he was referring to the slave of sin. Now he's saying that we are slaves of God, but it's actually servants of God. I serve God. I don't serve any person. I don't serve... I'm saved to serve, but I'm not bowing before another person. I'm not bowing before anything else. And this is the thing you have to know about control and all that. We are not supposed to be controlled by people. Right? Don't bow before the spirit of control. Don't bow before that. If you and your choice is not recognized, and this is the other hard part that you recognize when you learn, is that choice, that free will of a person, that they are able to choose whether they will love you or not, you cannot do for them. You cannot tell a person, you love me. They have to tell you, I love you. Right? And so also this makes you, uh, it turns you into a person that puts pressure on this other person to become this God that you want them to be. Make sense? So I want you to perform better so that I can feel more loved. Now, what can I do to make that happen? What tools do I have? Right? I can hurt you until you want to. <laughs> right? Maybe you want to, after I'm finished with this little course that I'm planning for you. Right? No talking, three days. Silent war. Still staper, right? Tantrum. Is this helping someone? Yeah. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there is any wicked and hurtful way in me. That wicked there is actually in the Hebrew it says idolatry. Look into me and see is there any idol in my heart. Is there anyone in my heart that takes your place? Is there anyone in my heart that is not supposed to determine how much I'm loved. It's not supposed to, to give me this message that only you can give me. Because I'm not going to doubt you ever again. I am loved by God, worth dying for. See, we know these things, but we don't have the revelation that we're allowing a person to determine this. And then it upsets you, because you, you left now what God says about you, and you turn to this person and let them now say what you want from them and you can't recognize that God is saying that you are loved but you're picking up this false message now because your person is in the wrong place so I think a lot of repenting this morning is just to get this person out of your holies of holies and we're going to lay it down because we want the relationship to be blessed we don't want it to be cursed well, if God is blessed or cursed right? it's hot or cold and so I want this relationship blessed I wanted to, to, 
the wrath of God away from this relationship. I want the jealousy of God to be turned away from this relationship. That He doesn't have to show me anything. That He can actually pour out. And what will happen at the end of the day? This person will be a gift from God. This person will be a gift from God. And, and it's just adding to my life. It is not my life. It is a gift from God. <clears throat> so this person is now in the right place. And if a person, you know, you just love. And God showed me that you can actually, you will be able to love better than before. Because it's not hindered or interfered with anymore. There's no pressure. And no um, expectancy. Because that expectancy messes it up. As a person has a free will and they don't do what you want them to do. <laughs> so you <laughs> messed up. And then if you get rid of that, then you can actually now get free and, and like whatever. You cannot hurt me. Because you are not in my holies of holies. Right, forgive me Lord for allowing the person to determine how much I'm loved. That's it. It's a whole revelation there. Forgive me, Lord, for allowing a person to determine how much I'm loved. I'm never going to do that again. I turn, I shun away, I run away from this. Right? I flee from this now. I don't want this anymore because this is my problem. Right? I repent of idolatry because I'm seeking someone else to do what only you can do. I'm seeking fulfillment, I'm seeking to touch, joy, happiness. I give them the power to determine how much I am loved. <laughs> I'm not going to give that power to you anymore. I'm not going to allow you to determine that anymore. Right? Forgive me, forgive me for allowing people or my business, my ministry to determine my value. Whether I'm called or not, whether I am anointed or not, whether you know I succeed or not. Because you see failure, but your eye is wrong. You're looking into these things as if it's the determining factor of how much God loves you. <clears throat> so the tools. What will I do now going forward? What will I do with him or her? I get love them. Now you can be free to love them. Because you will not be interfered with. Right? Yeah, life was difficult because of the pain before. So God will take this pain and this anger out. See, it's still Mother's Day gift now. Take the pain and the anger out, and then you will have a clean heart to love. So the love will be more pure. Because it's not interfered with all these uh, demonic forces that come and... and expect you to obey them right and 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 this is torment this year is torment i'm telling you now there's nothing that i know of that is more tormenting than to live in this pain um yeah without idolatry you will love more genuinely because expectations and rewards are gone and you will not be a slave of what this person because it's almost like a, you have to watch what you do. Just now they see that and then if they see that then they will not do that. And so you've got this whole machine that you run. There's all these works and things that you are busy with to, to get your, your idol to be happy so that maybe they can give you the right you know, message. Right? So... So the weight of what must I do is extra, right? Because of the, of the setup that I have to, you know, perform and, and serve this person. I just don't want to miss any of these notes. Um, part of the slavery is based in the fact that you have to watch what you say because this person has the power to control you. Watch what you say because just now, they upset, and then, you see, you see the picture. So you give them this, this place, and now you will be free. You will have your will back. 
your soul back. And your, and your soul can say no now and it doesn't get controlled by external person. You can say, no, I don't want to go out tonight, whatever. And now you are free. And now you are more real. Right, so it leads to self-hatred and issues with yourself. Because now you're on your own business here, yeah, maybe I'm not the right shape for him, maybe, you know, maybe I must change this, maybe you love me then. All of that self-hatred and issues with self will go away. Right? And also, you know, you've got that idolatry of self-worship. That I look at myself and I determine based on my performance, you know, I base everything that is success and prideful thinking, overestimating myself because I made myself an idol. And you must be careful when you speak. You must listen to what you say. I never do this. I always do. That big I coming out all the time is a problem. Yeah. Right? I am what I am because of grace. Yeah. If God takes his spirit away from me, I die. I will go back to soil. Because he, I'm totally dependent on him. And the strength I have in my legs and in my, the gifts that I have, the things that I have is because of grace. Look, I've spent 28 years, my first 28 years, I was BC, before Christ. Roverdung, okay? So, I understand the love of God better than a person that would be saved from baby, right? I understand, you know, what the angels did for me, what God did for me. And, and now, you know, I am more dependent on Him because I know what can happen. When this flesh and this soul gets their own way. Because that's what happened the first 28 years. Right? Everything, whatever, you know, I liked sin. Because of the, the, the God not being in my life. And not showing me what to do. And not giving me power to do. Right? Uh, so, so you have these demons of pride and self-righteousness and stuff. If you have self-idolatry that are continually telling you, you will feel better, just elevate yourself a bit more, then you will feel better about yourself. And so when there's something that you have to say sorry for, no, it wasn't me. I cannot fall. I cannot fail. I cannot, right? And now you're setting yourself up to fall because God doesn't like idolatry. If you stay humble, He will exalt you. If you humble yourself. You put yourself in that place. Without you, I'm nothing. Think about the farmer that hasn't got sprinklers. They farm on dry, they call them dry lands. They sow and they pray <laughs> for the rain to come. You must be like that. You must be totally dependent on God and He must help you. And then you will see the, 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 the prosperity come. Then you will see the blessing come. Right? Who the sun sets free will be free indeed. This truth will set you free. Right? You are saved to serve and love people. Right? So I see also women. Did you know that 72% of the women or the people that like our Facebook page are women? Because of the love, love language of women. <coughs> they want security and they want affection. And they tap into what the Holy Spirit does. They need security, they feel safe with God. That's why there's more women serving God than men. Men want to know that they're winning, right? And men also want a plan. Thank God I'm a man, <laughs> I can help the men. But this is a plan for you, men. This is a plan for you. Get that woman off, out of that holy place. Holies of holies. She is not allowed to determine how much I am loved. He is not going to be the determining factor anymore of how much I'm cared for, loved, worth, all of that. All right, can we say amen? Can we pray? Thank you, Father. All of us here, this is now the repentance part of this message. God, we want to say sorry. We want to say forgive us, God, this morning for allowing a person or a thing to determine how much you love us. Then we're not going to allow that anymore.
help us to sense when we get this person back in a secret place how we can sense that I'm getting angry again and that's I know it's a demon talking to me now it, I'm, 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 I'm becoming a slave again I'm, I'm getting pulled into to slavery again the, the devil wants me to serve and put an idol up but I'm choosing to put you in the center from now on God I'm not going to allow any person to come into this holies of holies anymore I believe father that you can fill this place the sanctuary this temple of God this body this soul and that I don't need any person to fill me I don't need any person to fulfill me the things I have and the people I have are gifts the ministry I have is a gift it is extra but my value my worth is found in what you say about me and I'm gonna say what you say God I'm not gonna say what the devil tells me anymore and I find myself in you and I see there's people that must still get healing as well in this area I believe that the Holy Spirit is moving in your heart and I believe that you need to find out exactly who you are in Christ that you have to find your identity so that you can change this bad identity for a good identity that you can give to God the ashes and he can give you the beauty that you can give this horrible to him this miserable to him this pain to him that's why he came to die on the cross to take it from you so that you can willingly surrender this and say God heal me restore me so even in the courts of heaven we come now and we say God we take away from the enemy this this uh, this paper this that he had this right that he had to come and torment us and we pray that the blood of Jesus will wash us clean today as we confess the sin of our idolatry that God that you will come now and bless our marriages and our businesses and the things that we put in this place that God we're gonna not let them determine anymore we want to help I pray that you will help us father to recognize when we step over this line God that we never put a, a burden on a person that we love that we never become what you don't design us to be that we will be free from this God I pray free from idolatry that we worship you you are the center you are our life you are our beginning and our end you are the Alpha and the Omega and everything between God you are our life and that's how we're gonna live this person we put by your feet this business we put by your feet we put it on the altar God we thank you for the gift that you give us God and we give it back to you today and I pray that you will bless that father bless our friend bless our wife our husband bless our business bless father bless us so that we can become exactly what you want us to be I pray that the relationships will now grow God to the full statue that the businesses will now grow to the full statue of the Word of God that this will now change God that your blessing will rain down father on every brother and sister's life today God that we will not be interfered with anymore God that we will be blessed father by you so I pray just wash us clean cleanse us God and help us to see the difference also help us to see recognize I'm not hurtful anymore it doesn't worry me anymore what they do it's not going to determine what how much I'm loved anymore help us to see that God set us free thank you for that God we receive it today we believe it today thank you for Mother's Day gift but also for every person in here young old male female all of us God we circle with these things we struggle with these things God and today we let it down we hate being angry we hate being depressed we hate these things and we reject these things in the name of Jesus I'm not gonna be a slave of anger or up, up fear anymore <clears throat> I surrender that God I say sorry that I bowed before other spirits but today we bow before your spirit and we say God with your power with your strength all things are possible we can do anything through Christ who strengthens us I pray restore our self-control 
restore the love the sense of love and acceptance and the love of God in our hearts that we will be strong from now on father and never doubt we are what you say of us father I am loved because you love me God I like me because you like me God I love myself because you love me God now I will love my neighbor as you loved me God as I love myself thank you Lord. I accept God that you are more than enough for me I don't need the extra in this world another God to help you you are enough these are for the unmarried and divorced and widowed women God is enough for you book of Isaiah says let me be your husband I pray Lord that you will take that position now and show this this mother show this woman father how much you love them and that you are enough for them God and we think about Jesus we get and pray that you will copy and paste that picture in our hearts forever that we will see that Jesus did this that you expect us to do not thrown out by what he sees not losing the mission or the finishing the race because you were his center and you were in the secret place of the heart of Jesus always thank you God we believe it today we receive it in Jesus name Amen